in question number 37 it is given that x y and z are non negative integers and they satisfy the equation x plus y plus z is equal to 10 then we have to find the probability that z is even so for that we first write the sample space now sample space of this uh, experiment is going to be all the non negative integral solutions of this equation so that's 10 plus 3 minus 1 c3 minus 1 so that makes it 12 c2 that is 12 into 11 by 2 and that is 66 now these are the total possible outcomes of this experiment and out of these uh, outcomes we have to choose the one in which z is an even number so let us consider z as equal to 2k then the equation becomes x plus y is equal to 10 minus 2k where k can vary from 0 1 2 to 5 and if I write all the possible integral solution non negative integral solution of this equation then that is going to be 10 minus 2k plus 2 minus 1 so that is 11 minus 2k c 1 that is 11 minus 2k now if we calculate the all possible outcomes which are favoring z is equal to 2k then it becomes sigma k equal to 0 to 5 11 minus 2k so they are basically the addition of first 6 odd natural numbers if we put k equal to 0 we get 11 and if we put k equal to 5 we get 1 and all are odd numbers so basically that is the sum of first 6 odd natural numbers so total favorable outcome becomes 36 so the probability of this event becomes 36 upon 66 which makes it 6 upon 11 so if we see the option option number b is obviously the correct option in question 38 set s is set of first nine natural numbers and it says that k varies from 1 to n and nk is defined as the number of subsets of this with 5 elements it has to have 5 elements and which contains exactly k odd numbers now we basically need to find n1 n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 plus n5 now n1 means uh, the subset of this particular set containing 5 elements and having exactly one odd number this says 5 element subset having exactly 2 odd natural numbers having n5 having exactly 5 uh, odd natural numbers now what we say is since there are exactly 5 odd natural numbers in this particular uh, set therefore we can say that uh, if we take any 5 element subset out of this 9 elements then the subset is going to be one of these cases and therefore 9c5 covers all possible cases that are required to count this and therefore our answer to this question must be straight away 9c5 which are the total number of subsets of this set containing 5 elements as these covers all these possible cases so our answer is 9c5 question number 39 there is a function defined from r to r for which f of half is half f of 1 is 1 and f double dash x is greater than 0 for all real x now basically we have to approximate the value of f dash 1 according to the options so we can straight away apply LMVT in 1 to half in for f of x and we can say that there will be at least one c for which f dash c is going to be equal to f of 1 minus f of half divided by 1 minus half and f dash c is certainly going to be 1 1 minus half so this is f dash c for at least one c one c belonging to open half to 1 
Now, since double derivative is going to be greater than 0, that implies certainly that f dash x is an increasing function. So, if f dash x is increasing function and I can see that uh, c is less than 1 because it belongs to this interval, therefore obviously f dash c is going to be less than f dash 1 and f dash c's value has been obtained as 1. Therefore, I can say that f dash 1 is bound to be greater than 1. Now, if f dash 1 is greater than 1, then there is obviously option c which is going to be the correct option. There is a differential equation given in question number 40 and that is eight root x square root of nine plus root x dy barabar dx upon square root of four plus square root of nine plus root x. So we can do one thing, we can take dy variable separable basically dy is equal to dx upon square root of 9 plus root x into square root of 4 plus 9 plus root x and one more uh, element is there 8 root x this is x Now it is a simple integration by obtaining by give, doing what we can get the function required function and for that we can straight away put 4 plus square root of 9 plus root x as t square. Now if we do this then we have 2 times square root of 9 plus root x into 1 by 2 root x dx as 2 t dt. Now, if we take this 2 down here, then our dt t dt is equal to dx upon 8 into under root 9 plus root x into root x, which is this quantity. Therefore, this quantity will entirely be replaced by t dt and in this if we put t square, we are going to t get t out of it, t dt upon t. So, after integration, we are going to get y as dt plus c therefore y is going to be t plus c and our t is going to be square root of this quantity therefore we can say that this is equal to 9 4 plus square root of 9 plus root x plus c. Now obviously uh, to find the value of c we must be given some initial condition so y 0 is given to be root 7 by using that at in place of y we put 7 and in place of x we put 0. So, obviously this becomes equal to root 7 plus c which implies that c is 0. Therefore, y is this function only y equal to square root of 4 plus square root of 9 plus root x and we ask the value of y equal to 256. So, this is square root of 4 plus square root of 9 plus square root of 256 that is 16. So, that is 25. So, 5 plus 4 9 square root is 3. So, option number B is the correct option to this question. There is a matrix M whose elements are basically the elements of the set 0, 1 and 2 and then we are given a matrix M transpose M. So, if I assume M to be a1, a2, a3 b1, b2, b3 and c1, c2, c3 then m transposes a1, a2, a3 b1, b2, b3 c1, c2, c3 and the question says that the sum of the diagonal entries of m transpose m is going to be 5. So, if we, if we find the sum of the diagonal entries basically then that is going to be first row multiplied by first column gives us a1 squared plus b1 squared plus c1 squared second row multiplied by second column gives a2 squared plus b2 squared plus c2 squared plus a3 squared plus b3 squared plus c3 squared and this entire sum is told to be equal to 5. 
Now, basically these variables can it can take only the values 0, 1 and 2 and we want to make their sum 5. So, after squaring if we want to make it 5 then there are very limited kind of possibilities that are left as in 5 out of these take 1 and rest all are 0. This is one possibility. So, if we count the number of cases for this then they are basically 9 variables. So, obviously, we will choose 5 variables out of them. We will assign 5 ones to them that can be done only in one way and the remaining variables will take 0 that can also be done in one way. So, that is 9 C 5. After that the case that is left is out of these squares 1 square becomes 4, 1 square becomes 1 and all the other 7 entries becomes 0. That is other possibility in which the sum is going to be 5. So, these are again 9 entries. Out of 9 entries we are going to choose 2 entries. Having chosen 2 entries 2 and 1 will be assigned to those 2 variables that can be done in 2 factorial ways and the remaining 7 variables can be given 7 zeros only in one way. So, the total number of cases becomes 9 C 5 plus 9 C 2 into 2 factorial and if we calculate this it comes out to be 198 and that is option number 3.